So here we're going to show you how to deploy an Oracle IDF application to the cloud. Um, the first step is probably create a database user. So we're going to use the Summit application and we're going to create a new database user in the database instance that you get with the Java instance. And we're going to create this Summit database user for our application. fill out the information, you can set the password and possibly set any privileges that you want to give to this user in terms of functionality. Then press the create user and the user will be created for you in the database. The next step for us is to actually take and bring the database structure into this user. So we'll do this from inside JDeveloper. If you'll open the database navigator, you'll be able to create a new connection of cloud connection type to the database that is hosted on the Oracle Cloud. So use the user that you just created, provide the URL to the Apex entry point. So just copy it from here, for example. And provide the SFTP information, which was provided for you in the email you got from the cloud when you created your account. And in our case we needed port 22 here. We can click OK. And now we can actually browse our database. Okay, we'll need to insert the password that we set for our new user. And we can look into which database objects are available right now. So we have a set of default database objects that were created for this user. However, we need the database objects for the Summit application. To do that, we're opening the database cart, and then we're going over to the database connection to our local database, where we can see all the tables, for example, and we can simply control click them and move them over to the cart. This means that we want to create them in the database. The next step is to do the same thing, for example, for packages, procedures, and function as needed. Simply drag and drop them into this cloud. Um, if you also want to create the same data that you have in those tables, then scroll this cloud window to the right and you'll see a checkbox which allows you to also include the data and not just the structure. Okay. Once this is done, click the cloud and this will create a new job that will create those database objects for you in a batch form. So you need to provide the connection information and the name of the file that will be created and pass to the cloud and then you click apply and JDeveloper goes off and starts the process. This may take a few seconds um, just to upload the file to the server and then a few more seconds to actually execute. Okay. You can track the functionality of creating this by looking into your jobs here in the deployment section of your database navigation. Here we can see our job. Currently it's in status approved. Um, if we'll hit refresh after a few seconds or minutes depending on the complexity of the jobs this will change into processed and at this point the database objects have been created for us. So now we can refresh our connection here, look at the list of tables and we'll be able to see all our summit tables here in the database with the data also included there. We can also switch to the SQL workshop part of the cloud and we can see the tables that were created over here as well. So now let's uh, switch back over to JDeveloper and take care of the actual application deployment. The first thing is you want to look into your ADF Business Components application module. In the case of Summit there are three of those but only one is the root application module. And you want to change the configuration of the connection to the database. So you're not going to use direct JDBC, you're going to use a JDBC data source. And the name of it is the name that is defined for your Java service. So in my case, it's database. So this is not one that you define, it's one that is given to you. Now you can save everything. And the next step is to actually go and deploy the application. So to do that, you go and just like a normal application, you choose Deploy. 
Now we're going to deploy directly to the server, so we're going to create a new connection to a server, so we'll give it a name, and we'll choose in terms of connection type the Oracle Cloud type. Okay. Then you need to provide your username, so this would probably be your email ID, um, and password that you chose. Um, information about your identity domain and the service name, so in my case it's Java. Okay. And you can test the connection to make sure that you're able to connect to the cloud, and if you are, you click Finish and complete the deployment wizard, which then takes your application and pushes it over to the cloud server. So you can see the process uh, being done over here. It's going to take some time, but when the deployment is finished, you'll have up here the URL to your application. So this will basically point you to the context root of your application. So you can copy this one and uh, go to a browser to access it. Of course, you can change this by changing the properties uh, of your Java E application in JDeveloper, so change the context root. In our case, we're going to go into the index page for the Summit application. We'll be prompted to do a login into the Oracle Cloud. Again, provide your username, password, and identity domain, just like you will do for any normal cloud inter interaction. And once you sign in, your application should come up, and you'll be able to use it just like a normal um, ADF application. But in this case, it's just hosted on the Oracle Cloud, so you don't need a server, not a database, and not a WebLogic server in your environment.